So I wanted to do a video about the change that the world is currently in the middle of. At the minute, like as a country, we are a little bit like, you know that cartoon with Roadrunner and that coyote? And he legs it out over the cliff and then he doesn't realize that he's out over the cliff till about two minutes and he stops and then he falls. That's where the UK is right now. We've jumped over the cliff. We don't know that we've done it. Um, it all looks very bad from the outside. Um, the political media culture who have been at the heart of things and the policy making culture who have been at the heart of things since the financial crisis have not only failed to address the shortfalls in our economics and the things it can't see with regards to the financial crisis, they've then stripped out all our institutions using the same belief system and what they've demonstrated on Twitter is that they don't have a landscape to reproduce anymore. And as we see with Karen Ingala Smith and Ruth Sawatka, the left have shown that the reason that we didn't know we were in crisis was because our trade unions have been playing out a, lab a Labour Party theme park thing and making um, social movements dangerous. The Labour Party have been so reliant on abusing people in social movements that they haven't realised they've explained why our trade unions are not functioning, why policy making is not functioning, why academia don't know anything. So that's like one thing and to the world right now this looks very bad. To the world the UK is a failure to address the coronavirus, we've just balkanised ourselves and we're that on Twitter. But we're not. We're actually a very very stable country and what's actually the problem in this country is that we don't understand that crisis are how systems develop and the reason that we don't understand this is because mostly we manage them within the democratic rule of law. We have an evolving rule of law, we have very mature systems, some of which are 1500 years old and still functioning. We have a monarchy who while they're being destabilised by the media at the moment are actually relatively stable and we are a very stable country. Now the duties to look after children that I discuss, it turns out that the reason that nobody in 2010 knew what those duties did or knew you couldn't deliver austerity is because actually those duties are so young that that's never had chance to get through to the core of our system. So what the last 10 years have done is they've generated crisis so that that will happen. The family court system where women had their ability to protect and provide for their children removed and then were put on trial in the family courts and either given control of by their abusers or statutory intervention was used to further harm them. The number of looked after, the number of care applications went through the roof. These, this will result in a number of legal actions later on as people take action about the breaches of human rights that happened here. Um, we will, in the process of renewing our legislation, the Crown will take parental responsibility at some point for looked after children, which they already have. Mostly, as soon as the Crown have acknowledged that they have responsibility for looked after children, the power imbalance behind this policy area is addressed and the Prime Minister will get a notification each week. You know, he will have to provide something to the palace each week at some point about the updates of these children. This, these systems are going through a process of evolution and consolidation. And it's actually happening very stably underneath the chaos that's being projected out by Twitter and our political media. Now, the problem is that I'm kind of watching this process and I'm kind of keeping notes. But the reason I'm making this video today is because while I understand that these systems will consolidate, because this is about failures in our actual economic belief system, that belief system has to fail. Now, it's already failed. We've balkanised ourselves. We have stripped and hollowed out our institutions. Austerity has generated crisis all over the place. And right now, we're sat on what's called a Thucydides trap. Now, since World War II ended, the world has been under kind of shaped by a system which we've called kind of the Washington Consensus, which was the UK and the US were kind of had an unspoken hegemonic kind of, you know, level of power. And that's no longer the case. And the problem is that the whole world has noticed this. And the whole world is just moving away. And the whole world has been watching the UK for the last five or six years, wondering whether or not we're going to cause major instability, because we are the site of a Thucydides trap. And the Thucydides trap is an ancient name that's given to a situation where one power emerges and another declines, and it usually gives birth to a war. World War II. Most of the situations that I discussed in those religious playlists are a similar kind of conflict, the Bronze Age collapse, the instability of the first century. And what these changes often are, 
there are actually major multifaceted conflicts about the failure of belief system which then lead to that belief system ending and adaptation. Now the last episode like this that we had was the Berlin Wall coming down. The Berlin Wall came down and it signified the end of communist, communism as a belief system in that way. But actually by the time the Berlin Wall came out down it was over and all the Berlin Wall did was it gave everybody a focal point so they could acknowledge that it was over. And the UK is currently sat in a situation where I don't think we're that aware of it, our government are search- certainly not aware of it, the policy making think tank and political cultures who are on Twitter and who have been using social movements to, make, to prevent this discussion and to kind of, you know, to subordinate vulnerable people rather than acknowledging that our belief system is over and that we have to adapt. They are still in their little circles. Westminster are very much caught up with coronavirus, which is another crisis, which is illustrating to them the nature of our systems, the way that they're connected, the way that we are connected to other people. But we are sat in the UK expecting a, we should be expecting a Berlin Wall style event quite soon. The economic belief system that's come out of the LSE that's shaped the Western world and the rest of the world for the last, well, since 1945 has been over for 10 years. I attended the LSE five years ago and they still don't know. And they're still lashing out to prevent anybody challenging or discussing this. The difference between economics and maths is the context changes around economics. The LSE don't know this because of the Fabian identity that's at the core of the institution that's shared at the Guardian and that's shared in the Labour Party. So that's like a little culture of major institutions that should be doing something right now, but instead they're just preventing us recognising change that occurred quite a long time ago. We are expecting a Berlin Wall type event very soon. We are in the middle of a situation where we are not aware of how the world sees us. And the world will want an event or a symbol or a totem which then they, they can fix these narratives on, which are about the point where the UK showed that the Washington consensus was over. Trump has already done it. He's just more or less threatened a coup in the US. And they have a struggle to actually show that they are a democratic country at the moment. The dream that the UK and the US are the beacons of liberal democracy is nonsense. We live in a world where, you know, gradually country after country are adopting democracy and we are no longer the model because what we are is that culture on Twitter and Trump and Corbyn and internet fandom and a political media culture who can't reproduce, who won't let go of power. Now all the systems in this country are still more or less working, we are still a stable country, but we are at a point in time where we will have to choose. And because of the dysfunction that's been exposed on Twitter and around political media, the people who are choosing for us are the bookers on Question Time, are the bookers on Newsnight, are the the journalists who can't see anything on Twitter and rely on abuse and and their environment being made dangerous for other people on Twitter. They are supposed to be the canary in the mine and instead they're talking to each other and looking at their reflections. So I'm making this video to say that somebody in this country was aware that this was the case before it happened. Coronavirus means we're all kind of locked in and we're going up the wall, but I'm actually, um, to be honest, I'm enjoying the isolation because I need to recover from the last kind of 10 years. The abuse that I got online was just them demonstrating inertia and how they deal with finding out about the existence of laws like safeguarding. That's how our political media culture deal with finding out about the existence of laws. Self-ID showed that within a week of a House of Lords meeting, Labour had made sure that the social movement around self-ID prevented discussion of safeguarding and generated the risk of the far right because that's what they want. That's the only reflex they've got. They're not acting consciously as a narcissistic culture in circles. But I think I'm making this video because I used to read about events like the Berlin Wall coming down and I used to think, how do people feel in the middle of that? And this video is my record of how I feel in the middle of this situation. I am currently watching the rule of law in this country develop normally. I am watching a stable democratic country that is functioning and I'm watching a Twitter culture and a media culture who are disconnected from everything. 
and I'm watching a world who, like, the UK is now synonymous with uncertainty and risk, who have been sat there trying to figure out how to fi- how to navigate this situation and neutralise us, and we've just neutralised ourselves. And under the cover of coronavirus, money is falling out of London. Investors are falling out of London. Our country is being enveloped in silence. And at some point, there will be an event which brings home to us that our dominance in the 20th century is well and truly over and that the economic belief system at the root of the financial crisis and a great deal of instability has been over for some time. The America, the US, I think, you know, they're a lot more powerful than we are. We are expendable and we have to find a new national story and we have to bypass that political media culture and we have to show the world that we are a stable democratic country because if we do not show the world that soon we may find out that we are not that for much longer.